The 805 Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Welcome to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Gina Carvalho, and Gina is the co-founder of Santa Barbara Response Network. Welcome, Gina. Thank you, Cinder. It's very nice to be here with oh, you today. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Oh, me too. And I know that the Response Network has been really busy, lots of projects, lots of good, important work lately. And so I'm hoping you'll tell us about that. Yeah, and I was really pleased to be invited because it's, it has been. Um, yeah. Since COVID, we had to really pivot our responses. Yes. because oh gosh. I'm sure every nonprofit you've talked to has mentioned this, yes. but we are a direct response network. So when there's a trauma or a violent incident or a suicide, families or agencies will call us and say, please, you know, can you come out with your volunteers and help us? Well, with COVID, we had to think about how are we going to keep the mental health focus in our community alive and active? So we used to, and still do, provide what we call compassion centers, oh. which are safe spaces where people could come and talk and process grief and trauma. And we call them compassion centers. So we took them online, and we did them on Facebook Live. Oh, wow. And we started the day of shutdown. I got together with my team, and I'm not as versed on the internet is some, you know, <laughs> you know, we've come into this at, at this point in life, but I knew that we could do something online. We, we went right into Facebook Live in English and Spanish, and we're posting messages where people can get help, what they might be looking for in terms of a loved one they're worried about mm -hmm. or themselves. And since then, we've done over 250 Facebook Live Compassion Centers in English and Spanish. Wow, since the and COVID Yeah, we, over 30,000 people or 36,000 people have viewed oh our my Facebook Live gosh. posts. And what we did is every week, in twice, English and Spanish, uh, we would talk to people about mental health issues. We'd have people from the community in, open it up, and then also have all the, non like you do, have the nonprofit uh, and mental health agencies talk about their work and how can people get a hold of us when the yeah. domestic violence went up and everything. So that was just one thing that so we did. So how does a person identify your your Facebook page? Is well, it just, just Santa Barbara Response, Response Network, but then we just started sending it out through all our volunteers. Oh. We, we tried to share it as much as we could with the people in our, our volunteers shared it and we would do email announcements. Um, through all the nonprofits I knew, I would send an announcement in English and Spanish and say, tune in, we're going to be talking about self-care. We're going to be talking yeah. about domestic violence. So if a, a person finds your Facebook page yes. and then likes it, they get the then paper. they are going to get it and automatically. And they can automatically yeah, that's link great. in there. That's right. That's so they go to idea. our Facebook, Santa Barbara Response Network, and also our website. And that was one thing that we did that I'm really proud of yes. because we wanted to still be in the community and we wanted people to know their mental health was going to be impacted and that that was really important. Yeah. And self-care, constant messages of self-care. Are you walking? Are you drinking enough liquid? Are you getting, taking time mm -hmm. to, to center yourself? So we shifted f from yeah. psychological first aid and including self-care. 
So now this is something, this Facebook thing you can take forward. I mean, oh, it's still going on. Definitely We're lemonade still, out of lemons. Absolutely. And then we just wanted to keep mental health just up front, up yeah. front, up yeah. front. It's okay to talk about it. And then our number all the time is we have a 24-hour number. Um, oh, people can okay. call in English and Spanish. All right. So That's then, good. And we can con connect them to services. And they can find that on your website. Absolutely. Everything. And also one thing that we did a lot more of was training people in psychological first aid. Oh. So the Santa Barbara Response Network, um, all our volunteers are trained in psychological first aid. It's an evidence-based trauma response protocol. It's very simple, very basic. It's not therapy, so anybody can be trained in it. So, so give me an example of what that means. I mean, There's that four, very easy. Um, there are co basically f eight core actions, as we call them, in psychological first aid. The first one is contact and engagement. So you never go up to a person without asking permission to talk to them, even if they've called you out. Introducing yourself. It's almost like the fundamentals of effective communication. Oh, so uh -huh. you, you okay. say, hi, I'm Gina. I'm with the Santa Barbara Response Network, and I know you've been through some recent loss, and I'm here to help in any way I can. So number one. Number two, you make sure they're safe. So even mm. though you're called out, and we are called out by first responders, by schools, we want to make sure we're in a safe environment, 360 degree view. Are we safe here? Do you feel safe? We establish safety. We bring down the anxiety. We're trained in just being able to calm and mm -hmm. stabilize. The third core action is stabilization. By breathing, mm. walking, let's just take a breath right now. And then we can go on and gather information about needs. What do you need? What's, what would be helpful to you right now? How can I assist you? Mm -hmm. Then connecting with supportive services. So we don't have clients. They don't mm -hmm. stay with us as patients or clients. We refer them on. Oh, okay. So we say, I'm going to call, um, you know, the family uh, services agency for you. Try to find a counselor or hospice of Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's what we do. We're basically a good neighbor. That is great, and but a well-trained trained good yeah, neighbor. Yeah, we've trained hundreds of people in Santa Barbara in English and Spanish. Hundreds. So you use a lot of volunteers. Yes, we use a lot. So if people want to volunteer please go on our website and we have trainings going on regularly. We have one in November, but we have them yeah. all the time. And it's free. And if you make a donation, that's helpful, of course, to yeah. our work, but we don't turn anyone away. Once you're trained, then we do a call out and say, we've had an incident. Um, would you like to respond? And at first, you shadow a trained responder. Oh, that's a smart idea. And you always go in pairs or teams. You never go alone. Oh. That's very important for self-care yeah. of, of our responders. And also, you're always invited. You never show up. Yeah. So even though you're a trained person and there was an incident and you heard about it, you don't show up and say, here, I'm with the Santa Barbara and I'm yeah, yeah. responding. Yeah. Because we have to be I'm invited. Here to save the day. I'm here to say, no, we have no say. <laughs> we are invited and then we touch base with the person who invited us, we get a, yeah. a debrief of what's gone on. That is so And the important. most important thing, I think, is the debriefs after we respond. Oh. So we take care of our volunteers. We don't want people to be in situations where they feel overwhelmed. Right, right, right. So if somebody's watching this and they're saying, gosh, you know, that sounds like something I might want to do, but I don't have any background in psychology. I wonder if they'd really want me. No, we want you. We have um, high school students, oh, terrific, okay. trained. We have retired people. Uh, we, ha we have some counselors, but mostly it's just everyday people who want to be able to help. So yeah. they can get the training. It's done on Zoom right now. Oh, that's good. So you can get your basic psychological first aid training and be involved in the community if there's any way. Now we do it, of course, with safe distancing. Uh -huh. But we also talk to a lot of people on the phone. Yeah. A lot of people call. And they need services. So, so about how long does the training take? It's, we, we do it, it's basically three to four hours. So it's pretty short, you okay. get the basics. And then we bring people back and do refreshers and role plays. Mm -hmm. oh, so now we good. can do it in breakout rooms. Yeah. yeah. So it's a half a day. 
and you get an opportunity to, to practice, and, and um, they were always offering them. So. That is just fabulous. Yeah. And so um, Santa Barbara Response Network is a 501c3. Yes, we are. And so you accept donations that are Absolutely. tax deductible to yes. the donor. Yes. So they can go on your website, perhaps. Yeah, sbresponsenetwork.org. Dot org. Okay. Yeah. And, and you have a donate button. We have it right there. We're really proud someone donated our new beautiful website to us. We had a oh. very basic website and one of our volunteers, um, trained volunteers, wanted to help us and oh, gosh. spent hours. And it's so please visit it. It's got a lot of very helpful information, English and Spanish. Mm -hmm. We connect to Mi Vida Mi Voice. Mm -hmm. which during COVID, the other thing that I found so beautiful was that I was part of at least four or five collective task forces and mental health agencies that got together mm -hmm. and we coordinated efforts. That's so important. Have you found that, Cinder? Our community is yes. a collaborative. Yeah. So clearly you collaborate with a lot of different organizations yeah. and groups. Absolutely, from the Indigenous Task Force, mm. Migrant Indigenous Task Force, the Community Providers for Youth, Community Engagement Team, they're all the providers that uh, attend to youth needs. Um, also the school board, I'm very involved, things there. Um, the Community Engagement Team, mm. it's a group of about 40 mental health agencies wow. headed by Be Behavioral Wellness. And we started after the debris flow. I was one of the original people yes, with Yes, well. yes, And so I have that collective and also the Bel uh, Mental Health Advisory Task Force. I mean, there's so many groups. Yeah. And we all support each other. And That's good. So there's a continuity. There's a the continuity of, yeah. of care. And also, I can always call someone up and say, you know, I've got a kid at City College I'm worried about. And yeah. We, we, that's why it's a network, the Santa yeah. Barbara Response Network. Yeah. It's almost like having a, a safety net. Right. Yeah, I'm really proud of what we do. Good. Yeah. So, so when a person goes to your website, uh, they can also make their financial donation and they can find out about the being a volunteer, Absolutely. about the training. Absolutely, the training, events that are coming up in October. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, we have many events all the time, but yeah. there's a lot of mental health events that we're involved with. Okay. Places we're speaking and places people can find out more about a film screening we might be doing, something like that. We're always active in education on mental health as well. So, yeah. yes, yeah, so if they go on our site, they'll get a lot of info. That is wonderful. So, yeah. um, I bet you have a story or two you could I share do. with us. I do. And you know, this was a st I was asked to I'm going to be speaking at the Partnerships for Excellence. Oh, about good our for work. you. Yeah. And they asked me about a story and I, I I thought of one and I thought I'd share it. It's close to my heart. Good. But um we responded after the debris flow mm -hmm. and you know, we, we lost some people and we lost some children that died yes. during the bleep. how sad that so was. So the Santa Barbara Response Network responded to all of the locations with our volunteers, and we weren't alone. Behavioral Wellness is there and many others. But we set up compassion centers, like I said, safe space mm -hmm. uh, where children could come, teachers. So we set it up at Franklin School. They had lost a little boy. And we set it up in the library. Mm -hmm. We had a team there. Mm -hmm. And the children um, knew, the teachers announced it and said, um, you can come to the library if you need a time out or you need a place to go. Mm -hmm. And um, they came and came, and many oh. children. Now with children we use art and physical expression because they're not going to sit and tell their feelings, but they'll paint and draw oh. and everything. So we had That's all really kinds smart. of art supplies mm -hmm. and, and the t of course the teachers provided everything and they just kept coming. And then eventually, th organically, they started to express their feelings. They wrote letters to the little boy, but then they c c created a game that they named his name and they started all doing it together. And then in the garden, there was a garden in the back, they did a ceremony. They, this was all self-motivated. If you let the person go through their process, mm -hmm. they find a way to deal with the grief and the loss. Yeah. 
and they sat in a circle and they each said one thing that they would miss mm -hmm. and they collected things from the garden and they made a little like ga uh, a shrine like garden and they named it after him and asked the principal if they could name that garden in his honor oh. these are six seven eight year olds oh golly and there was so much transformative energy but we have to honor that people have their way of processing grief yeah. tremendous trauma and grief yes. and what we did with our volunteers we just allowed we sat there we held the space and we came over two weeks we were there different you had shifts oh. and the children would say I said why are you why are you coming because this is a place I can come and have my feelings Oh, how sweet. So they left the classroom. We can have our feelings. And they would sit and cry. Some would just sit by themselves. Some would, you know, they just. Oh, my god. But gosh. that's what happens. That's what a safe space for containing emotion. How precious. And we've done these all over. And you are co-founder yeah. of this organization. Yeah. Yes. W w you know, when we started, we just did, you know, the psychological first aid. But you have to be creative and innovative. So the, the Compassion Centers were set up with our then executive director, Dr. Gil Reyes, mm -hmm. and we responded to the Isla Vista shootings. Oh. And it was so big that we knew we had to create safe spaces on campus. So yeah. we created these centers and we said, let's call them Compassion Centers. And then we had t-shirts that said that, and we had Compassion Patrol. Uh -huh. And we walked through Isla Vista and people would just say, talk to me. Just We'd walk through and people would just talk. So we had to find innovative ways to respond and to be present. And you, no response is, it's no cookie cutter. Yeah. If you have a shooting, like we had some deaths, uh, you know, Liberty Street or wherever, we have to think about how are we going to reach those families, those that neighborhood. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. not the same if you go to Montecito or the mudslides right, or Isla right, Vista right. or a, a school. That's great. So, so you tailor it. You to tailor each it. You individual. really assess it. That's why you do a sort of um, reconnaissance or evaluation of the situation and uh, try to give the most effective response. So that's when the organization started, was. No, before no. then. We started um, 11 years ago oh, when there really? was a rash of suicides in the Latino community. We had young men, um, gang-related at that time, they, they were, there were several of them in a row, and we, the community didn't know what to do. And I work at, also at the Glendon Association, uh -huh. another mental health nonprofit, mm -hmm. and we got together with the school board, probation, behavioral wellness, and brought in Dr. Robert Macy, who was one of the co-founders of Psychological oh. First Aid, oh, oh. and said, he said, this will be very effective to stop the contagion. Mm -hmm. So we did that. It was effective in the Latino community because, you know, we had to be respectful of that community and how That's to access good. the families. And f since then, we've been very involved in a lot of responses in our Spanish-speaking community, and they trust us. Yeah, because you have their trust now. Yeah, so we did that, and then after that, we we thought, you know, let's keep this little organization going, and it's been 11 years, and we became a 501c3 a few years back, and we're still here responding. That is so great. It's a beautiful model. because It sure is. It's grassroots, completely grassroots. We're all, we don't even have, we're mobile. We don't even have an office, really. Just a phone and... Are you aware of any other communities or, or I heard cities of, that have this? I looked around and I know there's peop, There's one small organization in LA where um, the responders go out with police to incidents. And I heard of one in San Francisco, but nothing like this. I think we're so unique Yes. that I don't know of another response network that's just volunteers trained uh -huh. to go out and help their friends in the community. Yeah. And it really grew organically over those 11 years. It grew organically. And also we're offering, even if people don't want to respond and just want to be trained, mm -hmm. they're going to have tools to be able to respond to their own children. Yeah. How to, how to be with your own kid who's struggling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or partner. That's or a very good point. Yeah. So Gina, we have about a minute left. Um, okay. Is there anything else that you'd like the audience to know about the Response Network? I would like to say that um, if 
I encourage them to go to our website because we're doing so many presentations and talks. And but I I I encourage them to get involved. Oh, that's good. I think that everyone, you know, when we had the pandemic and other like we had the fires, we mm -hmm. responded and the mudslides. People, we got a lot of calls. How can I help? Oh, How can I oh, help? That's, People want. That's encouraging. They want to help, and we can give them an opportunity to be able to be present mm -hmm. with others that are hurting. And I think there's such a good feeling when you get back. Yeah. The idea of the help, you know, I'm able to make an impact, I can help, mm -hmm. is so empowering. And it takes us out of our own suffering. Boy, isn't that the truth? That you is. Know, the fact that you can help a family or a person hurting takes you out of yourself. Yeah. As people say to me, how can you do that kind of work? It's so painful. You're in like death. But you know, when I'm there and I'm making that connection, I feel so present and alive and so grateful oh, that gosh. I'm, I'm able to help. Well, so. you are a blessing, my dear. Yeah, thank you. Sir. Thank you for all of the good, important, vital work that you're doing that touches the lives of so many people in a powerful way. Thank you. And yeah, thanks for being with us today. Thank you for having this show. And thank you for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time.